My parents spent three and a half years as prisoners of war. They were taken by force, housed in horrible conditions, and put on a starvation diet of dirty, insect-ridden food. The prisoners were lined up in front of machine guns and told they would never see each other again. Then the men were marched off. The children, if they could walk, were then marched off. And the women were marched off. My mom was six months pregnant. They were slated to be killed, but were saved by miraculous rescue. So the story of Viktor Frankl's ordeal in World War II has some resonance with me. But you don't have to know someone who's been in a concentration camp to appreciate existentialism. Before the war, Viktor Frankl was a successful psychiatrist in Vienna. At age 20, he met Freud, but wasn't impressed with his theory. He preferred Adler. Frankl saw patients, worked on writing a book, and developed centers where teens could receive free counseling. In September of 1942, he became the prisoner number 119104. As a prisoner, you're stripped of all your clothes, your freedom, and your dignity. Frankl lost everything, including the manuscript for his unpublished book. One of the mental projects Frankel undertook as a prisoner was to remember as much as possible of what he had written. Years later, he published his book, As Remembered, The Doctor and the Soul. During the war, Frankel's life died in Bergen-Belsen. His father starved to death in Theresienstadt, and his mother and brother were killed in Auschwitz. What's the secret to surviving a concentration camp? Although you can't control what other people do to you, Frankel emphasized the impact you can have on your own will to live. He noticed that people who did the best had an important task to do, a family to return to, or a vision of the future. In circumstances where there is nothing else you can control, you're still in charge of your mind and attitude. In a more general sense, Frankel believed that the same rule applies to those of us who have never experienced such extreme conditions. You don't have to be a prisoner in war to have things in your life you can't control. But, says Frankel, you don't have to give in to self-pity either. The secret of life is that you must find meaning in your life. You can't ask life for meaning. You must tell life what your meaning is. It is as if life were asking you the question, what is your reason for living? As you can see, existential places the responsibility at your door. You are responsible for your life, but you are only responsible for your own life. You only get one life. No fair trying to control others or live through them. Pushing your child to be a dancer because you always wanted to be one isn't fair. The rule is simple. One life per person. To find meaning in your life, Frankel suggests four guidelines. First, look at your experiential values. You know the experience of encountering something you dislike, and you know what it feels like when you meet something you value. So use those experiences to inform yourself. Aim your life toward those events that inspire you. They might be aesthetic experiences, such as appreciating the beauty of art or the patterns in nature. Or they might be those moments when you are awed by the ocean or feel at peace with the universe, what some call peak experiences. Second, consider your creative values. Meaning can come from being involved in a project, a mission, or a passion. Meaning in this sense is goal-oriented and future-focused. Of course, the ultimate creative value is to take on your life as a project. Third, review your attitudinal values. You can choose to give humor, act bravely, or to treat others with compassion. Franco maintains that your attitude has a lot to do with how you choose to live. Others can take your money, your dignity, and even your freedom, but they can't rob you of your view of life. Fourth, discover your transcendent values. Some people have overriding super-meaning values. These values are based on spirituality or ultimate meanings in life. Whether you call it religion, philosophy, or ruling passion, transcending values don't depend on others or on the completion of a project. Ultimate meanings are independent of circumstances. Of course, existentialism itself is an ultimate value. It assumes that individuals are personally responsible for their beliefs, actions, and existence. You have one life, so your responsibility is to choose the direction it should go. You are a moral chooser. You have at your core a conscience, the wisdom of your heart. It is the source of your personal integrity and the cause of your actions. Some existentialists add the assumption that there's nothing after this life. You have one life and nothing else. If you want to fit it in, you better do it now because there's no do-overs. Frankel is not that pessimistic. He makes no conclusion about what will happen after you die. But he does emphasize the importance of being responsible for the life you have now. 
Frankel was so insistent on personal responsibility that he proposed the Statue of Liberty on the East Coast be balanced by erecting a Statue of Responsibility on the West Coast.